Let's consider what our examples need to look like now that we have a store going into and out of interp. This is an old example, when interp took an expression in an environment to return to value. So now, when we take a store, that means our calls to interp and tests need to start out with a store, such as the empty store. And instead of a value, we get back a result, so our checks need to show that as well. We get a res, in this case int v, and because interpreting just the number 5 doesn't change the store at all, we should still get back the empty store. How about the case of a box expression, though? So when we interpret a box expression, putting a 5 in for uh, the value of that box, starting out with the empty environment and the empty store, uh, then we should get back a result, which is what? We're going to get back a box, but also the store has been updated. The box is represented with box v, and the store sometime, somewhere inside of it needs to have this int v5. That int v5 goes into a cell though. And let's say that when we start with the empty store and we allocate, we're going to allocate from address 1 and then keep incrementing. It's traditional not to allocate at address 0 after all. So we would uh, get a 5 put into cell 1 as part of the store. And that means that the box we get back needs to refer to that location. So, because that's where the 5 is in memory. Right? We've allocated address 1, our box v just needs to remember the address that we allocated, and then you look in memory to go find the, uh, the value inside that box. Uh, that means that over our value data type is going to have nv, closed v, and box v, like we suggested earlier, but now instead of using splate boxes, we will be using our own allocated locations. So a box v just has a number inside of it. To put it all together at the end then, this cell is the only thing that we allocated in the store. We, in, we interpret boxy nt5, and so we start with the empty store, add that cell to it with override store, and that is our complete example. Let's consider a set box example. So here I am creating a box 5, then I'm going to put a 6 instead of the 5 inside that box with set box. So what should we get as the result? Mo is not going to return void, we'll just return the, uh, the new value that we put inside the box in addition to installing it in memory. So we should expect an int v6 back. That is, after we do the set box, we don't have the box anymore. But inside of memory, we can see that there's a 6 instead of 5. So the box part of interp will end up allocating cell 1 to have an nv5 in it, just like we saw in our previous example. That's what we get from interpreting just this part. And then when the set box part happens, it needs to change the store to have a 1 mapped to 6 instead of 5. Now the way we're going to do this is it turns out we'll keep the whole history of assignments because, uh, because this is the easiest thing and it's nice for examples to see the whole history. So we'll see that originally 1 was mapped to 5, but then the set box caused 1 to be mapped to 6 instead. So this is our overall test case in the case of set box of box. We get a store that has two overrides in it, reflecting the initial allocation of the box and then the assignment into the box. See store.rhm for more examples, including updated versions of the old examples.